Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? How you feeling? Welcome to this week's rather stacked search and report just because I didn't do one last week. I do apologize for that, but without further ado, let's get straight into the news items of these past two weeks because there's been a lot going on in the video game industry. First up, what I want to talk about, I'm going to take out, I'm going to go through the quick news of the day of the week, obviously, um, and just kind of like give my little tidbits here and there. First of all, most excitingly, talking about Smash, I just played on the El Hugo box tournament for smash and i completely got my ass kicked um but shout out to uh shout out to hungry box and all the team out there who do these kinds of uh, online tournaments given the certain circumstances but i will say that one of the biggest news of the past two weeks is that steve from minecraft others might know him as minecraft steve has been announced for smash and he also got an extensive extensive in-depth look from uh masahiro sakurai from the man himself telling us how this game how this character works he seems to be a very overpowered character coming out next week um, with the version uh, 9.0 from super smash bros he is his edge guarding is extremely out of this world like you can literally build a wall just a, a wall of blocks and prevent people from getting onto the stage and that to me is probably its biggest and its most frightening ability but people lost their collective minds when when minecraft steve was announced for super smash bros ultimate i've been i've been having a blast looking through all those reaction videos including my own shout out just check it out no way it's minecraft steve no way it's minecraft steve no way it's minecraft steve bro It's gotta be a joke. Thank you. Also, we got an extensive in-depth uh, gameplay trailer. Not so much a trailer, it was most just like a presentation from Nintendo Treehouse Live for Age of Calamity. I'm super excited for this game. It's it's amazing what the, the team at Koei Tecmo has been able to produce because from these few in-depth in depth gameplay presentations that i've seen um both from tokyo game show and from nintendo treehouse they seem the game seems to really respect the source material especially when i'm talking about the art style for breath of the wild looks very very well represented or very well recreated in a warriors game in a musu game this is not something that i was expecting i actually hold up I actually went out and bought Hyrule Warriors just because of how excited I am for this game for Age of Calamity and like playing this game like you can obviously tell it's a Zelda game but there's like certain things here and there that are, are specifically that specifically tell you that this is a Warriors game but Age of Calamity is looking more and more like a Breath of the Wild game like I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's it's you know it's the same game it's not it plays completely different but it, it's amazing to me to see how well they're they've been able to recreate it it looks like a super fun game it looks like a very very true to form game especially because we get to play as Urbosa my lady but yes, this game obviously comes out on November 20th, so be out on the lookout for it. It's all for pre-order, so go ahead and get it if you like these types of games. Now that we got like the small tidbits here and there of uh, information, let's get into the meat of this episode, the meatiness. First up, we got Team Executor is being indicted in the US. Here the, Debar uh, the Department of Justice says, Two members of notorious video game piracy group Team Executor are in custody, arrested on an indictment from the Western District of Washington. Two leaders of the world's most notorious video game piracy groups Team Executor have been arrested and are in custody facing charges filed in the U.S. District Court of Seattle. Um, here, Max Lurin, 48, a French national of Avignon, France, Yuanning Chen, 35, a Chinese national of Shenzhen, China, and Gary Bowser, which ironically, that's amazing. One of the biggest piracy group leaders. His last name is Bowser. How fitting. 51, a Canadian national of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, were charged in a federal indictment unsealed today. Um, this was obviously from a Friday, October the 2nd. 
it's it's amazing just uh just how how much how long team executive has been has been in business i don't want to call it business but you know obviously it has been an operation they've obviously been pirating games from consoles such as nintendo switch uh, nintendo 3ds the nintendo entertainment system the classic edition the sony playstation classic and the microsoft xbox here are the Department of Justice website further states, these defendants were allegedly leaders of a notorious international criminal group that reaped illegal profits for years by pirating video game technology of US companies. Um, according to court documents, the team executor criminal enterprise is comprised of over a dozen individual members located around the world. Members include developers who exploit vulnerabilities in video game consoles and design circumvention devices website designers who create the various websites that promote the enterprise's devices, suppliers who manufacture the devices, and resellers around the world who sell and distribute the devices. Um, according to the indictment, Team Executor at times cloaked its legal activity with a purported desire to support gaming enthusiasts who wanted to design their own video games for non-commercial use. However, the overwhelming demand and use for the enterprise's devices was to play pirated video games. To support this illegal activity, Team Executor allegedly helped create and support online libraries of pirated video games for its customers, and several of the enterprise's devices came preloaded with numerous pirated video games this is this is wild to me it, it's it's crazy to see just how serious this is i mean the the department of justice even put out this put out this whole write-up about just this team it's amazing to me just how big of a case this has turned out to be here spook meal dome further states that these are the people that have been have been selling their os and homebrew stuff for those of you that don't know you can basically hack your switch we don't condone it obviously in this channel but um you can basically hack your switch and you know play all of these games um sometimes at, at a, a significantly reduced price um, obviously they're pirated video games um you can do a bunch of other things with a homebrewed uh console but here spook meal dome says that their os was even illegal because it copied an open source os without following the license even so i mean if if they were selling it if they were selling the systems if they were selling either the licenses whatever they were it was obviously stolen this is not okay obviously the modding community is is very very separated from this type of, of acts because this is basically piracy this is not okay but in my opinion glad they took down this this team it's obviously not okay to steal other people's work and you know selling it as your own it's never okay in any industry so uh, to me it's it's amazing just how serious this turned out to be just that even the department of justice had to do a press release and also seeing just how big of a global presence team executor had but obviously we'll keep updated to this i mean they're obviously indicted they've been arrested so it doesn't seem to be very good news for team executor and our second big news item of the week of the past two weeks i'm gonna keep saying it i don't care um we finally got confirmation and a date for when japan super nintendo world will open and that is on spring 2021 yes we all remember from the uh, i think it was um, six months or so so i mean it's been over half a year that they announced super nintendo world opening up in japan this is obviously being done in unison with uh, in partnership with universal studios i'm so excited for this and i just hope that japan will let american tourists travel to their country in spring of 2021 because newsflash if you're an american or if you're traveling for america you are not welcome in a lot of places right now you are either quarantined you're either set to quarantine for 14 days or you're basically just denied entry a shout out to our government and and just not taking this seriously but here the verge further states nintendo has announced that its first theme park area will belatedly open at universal studios japan in osaka next spring super nintendo world was originally planned to open before the 20 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo, but the date was pushed back along with the games themselves due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Separately, Nintendo will also open a theme cafe and store at Universal Studio Japan's Hollywood area next week. Here's what they'll look outside and in, and here are some renders of what the stores and cafe look like. Here are also some items that are going to be sold in the cafe. I can already tell I'm going to get a headache if I eat any of these two snacks.
that's definitely too much sugar. And we obviously got some merchandise as well for from this little shop out in Universal Studios Japan. Um, the cafe and store will be open from October 16th, which is this Friday, this coming Friday. So if you are in Japan, shout out to you. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out the cafe and the store and we got something big for to look forward to in 2021 now. And on our third news item of the week, we got CD Projekt Red announcing something they didn't they said they were they weren't going to announce or they were at least going to avoid completely, but here we are. They announced Crunch in order to meet the release deadline for Cyberpunk 2077 and the internet wasn't happy. Here Jason Schreier says Last year, the bosses of CD Projekt Red and approached me for an interview. They wanted to announce that for Cyberpunk 2077, they would be avoiding mandatory crunch. This week, they sent out an email to staff announcing studio-wide mandatory crunch. Uh, here, for Bloomberg further states, Polish video game developer CD Projekt Red told employees on Monday that six-day work weeks will be mandatory leading up to the November release of the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Red, a subsidiary of Poland's biggest gaming company CD Projekt SA, has been criticized previously for engaging in crunch, an industry term for excessive overtime in game development. CD Projekt Red co-chief Executive Officer Marcin Iwinski last year told gaming website Kotaku that the company would be avoiding mandatory crunch and was committed to allowing employees to work without overtime. But an, an account from a CD Projekt Red employee recently, as well as an email to staff earlier this week, indicate that the company hasn't lived up to its word. The employee who asked not to be named discussing private information said some staff have already been putting in nights and weekends for more than a year. So they've been doing crunch time way, way, way back. This is obviously not okay. Um, obviously exploiting your developers, overworking them can lead to burnout and does set a very bad precedent of, you know, people thinking that this is normal and this is not normal. Obviously you being overworked just to meet a deadline is obviously not okay. It's not normal. Um, obviously the, 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 the off day here and there and the weekend that you gotta work, that's totally understandable, but it's 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 normal for people to be upset at CD Projekt Red for this. I'm definitely upset. I've always been a huge, huge person on workers' rights. It, it, crunch isn't worth it. it. It brings so much bad PR to your game. It brings so much bad uh, PR also to your company and like it just drives away talent. People are not gonna wanna work for you if you are known to be crunchers or whatever you call it but obviously you know people are still excited for this game people are still excited for the the november release for this game hopefully it doesn't turn out to be another rockstar type of scenario where they get a lot a lot of flack for it but we'll see obviously leading up to the release date which is next next month surprisingly um, we'll hopefully we'll get more and more um, clarity on what is going on with CD Projekt Red and their crunch times. And for our final news item of the week, we got PlayStation releasing a breakdown or a teardown of some sorts of the PS5 themselves. This uh, really gives you an in-depth look, an up-close and personal look, like they got they like to call it, at the console. It shows you know the different connections the different i the the io of the system it shows the the innards of the system it shows what chips they're using it shows the motherboard and most importantly it shows just how to swap it between vertical and horizontal which seems like a very convoluted way to do it like why couldn't they just put like little rubber feet on the side or on the bottom and just you can just flip it but at least they include the tools to do that shout out to them this also further makes me wonder if the case the case is going to be replaceable with more customizable options i hope there is but yeah i'll link the video down below this is a very extensive look at the what's inside the actual uh, ps5 obviously this video goes further into detail as to what Sony is using what's inside the PS5, what graphics card they got, what storage they got, 
how much memory it has, obviously what CPU they're using, and I commend them for being so honest and so open. This is some sort of very straight to the point marketing that I kind of appreciate. I mean, it's very transparent to show what's inside your machine. It's obviously a huge machine, like just from first impressions, this game, this console is almost the size of what my shoulder width. Like it's so, it's so large. It, it leads me to believe that, I mean, I hope, I don't know what they're gonna do. It, to me, it seems that the slim version of the PS5, which I'm imagining, I'm predicting it's gonna come out. It's gonna have some very, very sizable reductions. I mean, it's probably not gonna be able to produce as high quality as the PS5. I mean, I'm sure, just as much as like the Xbox Series S can only produce up to 1440p, I'm imagining the PS5 Slim is gonna have to take those same those same risks because this thing is big for a reason. It's it's a very powerful beast. It's it has I mean it, it looks like it's gonna run smoothly and very cool. Like it has a huge cooling fan. It has a humongous heatsink. This leads me to believe that it the PS Slim, the PS5 Slim is gonna be very underpowered. I mean not not entirely but it's definitely gonna be more underpowered than the PS, uh, PS5 base model. So, I mean, it's coming out next next month. I mean, we're gonna be getting more and more information on this and see, hopefully get at least an update on what next steps there is for Sony and the PS5. But with that, I've been True Fernie. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Links to my socials are down below. Please make sure to follow me on Twitch where I've recently, not recently, it's been like three months, but I still, it still feels very fresh in my mind, um, where I've become a, uh, an affiliate. So any and all support over there helps a lot. Please let me know what you think of Search and Report. Let me know if there's anything um, I should be covering. This is obviously a very broad, show and i'm covering almost any and all topics that have to do with gaming um, but i kind of feel that i should really narrow it down to either consoles either to uh, a single console or i mean i don't know I'm, I'm open to feedback i'm open to feedback is what i'm trying to say please take care of each other but most importantly take care of yourself see you next week peace